complete bull calf. This is knackers. Right, we're in action. Got a wee party of cows for me this morning. Here we are, we can. What? Yeah. Be. That's a lorry done. jump back in the tractor and do some more plowing today I think. This is the field we're in today. Kev made a start at it yesterday and um, he's shifted to a field today that's kind of out of the way so we want a full day at that to get it finished so it doesn't need to go up there again. So there was carrots in here so the ground got grubbed after the carrots were in but it's needed work a wee bit more so it's just getting plowed. If the GoPro falls off it's gone forever. bit rough over this bit where there's a joint between where it was barley and the end of the carrots here. A stone in here, I've got hold of it on the back first, hopefully it's just going to pop out. Almost. Yeah, it comes. There's a decent size of stone there. Just coming down for this stone, but it's about time we did another music round. So here is point two or three of a song. Now. One more time. And again, go on. Prize is there'll be a calf named Dafty if you manage to guess it. One guess per video. And each video from this video, you'll get either a wee bit more of a song, or you'll get a clue. Thankfully there's not loads of stones, just the ones so far. Needing a stone break, a second stone break. Another nice one in the collection. Not as big as some of the other brutes we've got. There's one back there that's massive. Update on the mower, um, I've just phoned them, so um, they've ordered a new CV joint for the right side um, that didn't get replaced before. They're going to pop in tomorrow with coolant and fill up the coolant so we can actually get using it. So a bit annoying that it didn't just come like that the first time round, but anyway, they're rectifying it. Right, I've just come across an absolute belter of a stone, another belter of a stone. I went live on YouTube when I pulled it out, so that's why there's no video right now, but I'll maybe cut a wee bit in from the live video, but there it is. Makes the forklift look, not small, but it's an absolute stonker. There's the hole it came out of. The camera doesn't show it off that well, but that's a big hole, I'll go down into it. Quite a sizable hole. There's a few other bits to get out of it. Um, just weird bits that have broken off the main the main stone and then I'll need to fill it in. I'll not bother bringing our stuff, I'll just push stuff from the sides round about into it. Help it. This is one of the bigger ones going into the rockery. Some size of beast that. Right to hope we'll see you in the morning. So there we go. Right, good morning. Just thought we'd pick up those wee bits of stone that were left. I took the big one down, but there's wee bits left. More for the rockery. For those who are interested, there's the five lambs. Still happy, still alive, still healthy. Oh yeah, Biza. That is damn expensive. A rough calculation, that's cost approximately 420 quid to fill up. Smashing. I'm just heading along the road, pick up the subsoil. There's a few hard bits, compact end rigs and whatnot, that are going to get subsoiled. There we go, subsoil is on. It's got the new shoes that Kev put on, so, so there'll be a wee bit more resistance in it than there was the last time, but should fluff up the soil a lot more than the old shoes. Because the shoes are big, they're deep in the soil, and the soil's obviously quite hard down there. Big packer on a hydraulic ram to control the depth of it all. That's why it's got a big belter of a packer on the back. 
Right, we're in action. This was a field of carrots last year, so this end rig got fairly battered and tracked on, so it's quite hard and compact. So, so I'm just going through it with the subsoil there, lifting it up a bit, adding a bit of fluff and air to it. Hard soils reduce um, the ability for roots to penetrate and grow a good root system, which then means the plant can't soak up as much nutrients, which means you get a lower yield. It also compaction increases surface runoff um, from water, so if there's heavy rain, um, there's less chance of it soaking into the soil because um, there's less pores and pockets for the air to flow through. So that's why we want nice fluffy soils. What the shoes are doing, they're just lifting the soil completely and as it lifts, it all cracks and kind of disintegrates. And as it cracks, that's good for drainage. It reduces the compaction through it all. It's, it, subsoil needs to be run in relatively dry conditions. Otherwise the soil doesn't crack. You just end up panning below the surface and it's actually probably worse for the ground. Once I get out of this field and into another one, I'll put the GoPro down and get a wee slow mo so you can see the fluff of the soil coming in. On my last row here, Kev's just come up to this end rig, so he'll be, he'll be setting a curve along here with the GPS, and then from that curve and the GPS, he can then start here and work his way to the fence line. So that's what he's doing at the moment, drawing a curve, and then he'll come back and plow that way. There's the damn dug. Here. What a day for it, Doug. What a day. There you go, there you can see the curve I've drawn. It started on that green dot there, and that's the other end where the star is. So between those two is that fence line. There you go, it's just starting there, so we fold it all that way. It'll be the opposite down the bottom of the field. Alternate it each year. Doug told me this last year, but I think it's called tripping. When you trip the end rig, you start from that side and you fold it that way and you work out the way. Is that called a trip? Something like that. Someone will know down below. This end rig shouldn't be as compact, but there's a few wet bits. They were going to get drained, but run out of time, basically. Don't know what we're going to be like through here. Just drop it down in gear. Already starting to slip. Come on. Down a bit. Working. Look at the water. That's why we need to get this corner drained. This drain is right there, there's a ditch right there. It's not far to go at all, it's just a wee, wee puckle bit. There's obviously burning heather up in the hills over there. See the smoke? What kind of digger is that? Bright orange. There you go, we get a side view of it. Hopefully that'll help the water get away in that wet patch there. There's a few people wondering how this how this works. So I've got to here, type. So if I was doing a straight line and I wanted to work the whole field, what I'd do is go to, I'd sit right there, I'd enter a mark A, I'd drive to the far end, and I'd then set the mark B on there. And then that draws a straight line between A and B, and you set the implement width. So if I go to here, implement. So when you put in an implement, which is a machine like uh, so a lemkin that's a plow over and plow again. Um, heave I'm on today, which is a subsoiler. So I'll put on the heaver. This then takes into account the width of the machine. And from that AB line, it sets lines at intervals, the exact same width as, as the machine. And then you come along, you square up next to the line, and it tells you how far off the line you are. And I'll click auto there. And what the tractor will do is take that down as close to zero as it can get all the way along the line and it's accurate to about two and a half centimeters. Because I'm on an end rig, I'm gonna be doing a curve just now. So what I'll do is I'll change that to a curve and I'll press start here and then I'll drive down here around the corner and away to the other side and then I'll press stop and that will store the curve and it will draw a curve on here. Similar to that, that was the last field I just did. That was the curve it followed. So I've zoomed in there. So that was the curve I drew in the last field just there. So that's this curve here right there and those lines are exactly this this width of machine apart so as i'm driving along here this will just be storing data points and drawing a curve from it right i'm at the other side so stop yes and then it'll sort that out there you go it's just drawn the lines for me if i go to here you can see the curve i've just drawn there you go that's the bottom of this field press that button so as I drive forward, it'll get itself closer to that line. So it gets down into the green zone. Green zone, that's good. 
So that's its distance away from the line right now, 0 0.2, 0 0.1 of a centimetre, 0 0.8, and I'm following that red line. Jobs are good in. It's fairly simple, easy to operate. Right, I'm switching field, but I've also got a stone to go and pick up. That cow there, we just shifted her next door. She's about to calve. Won't be too long, so keep an eye on her on the farm stream cameras. Remember, if you use the code Crawford's Farm, you can get a discount if you add a 64 gigabyte SD card and a five meter extension cable into your basket when you buy one and use the code Crawford's Farm, you'll get those two bits for free. I'll show it in action, right? So obviously that's my straight line. Auto. Let it square itself up. There you go. I see to go back to where I'm starting, which is up there. But it'll do the same in reverse. There we go, that's the last of it done. So this patch here, that brown field right there, the next brown field, and then oh that dark brown field at the top. We have a hoof. One hoof. Here's some wood. I think these are like joists, so they're like pre-built joists um, for the top of the conversion on the back of the shed we're doing. There's loads of them. Piles and piles and piles. Don't know when the joiners are coming back to start fitting them, but it won't be long. Right, they're out to replace the CV joint and fill it up with coolant, the mower. So hopefully we'll get it going this afternoon. What a day. Good day for to cut grass as well. I've got this wee pressure washer set up. So it's gonna sit in that container. There's electricity on the other side of the sheets, but I'll just run it underneath for now. Figure that out in a minute. The quad bike, when it wasn't working, sat and got covered in bird. So I'll give this a wash, just be the first thing I've washed with it. See how it gets on. Right, should be going. So power's up, pressure's up. I'm gonna put soap in it. This wee hose thing. Pull out, don't know how far it comes. Don't wanna break it. Oh, damn it. Packed away. Took about 100 seconds to pack away. Same again to unpack it now that it's all set up. So I think things will get washed more often anyway. Anyway, quad bike's clean. First time it's been clean in a while. There we go. Nice wee semi calf. Smashing. Well, I was straight away looking after it. That worked out well, obviously chucked itself underneath the barrier, so I'll get it tagged, spray its navel and chuck it back in. There you go, wee bull calf, there's his knackers. Hey wee man. When you're tagging, you just want to avoid the cartilage in the ear. So there's, like, there's two lines of cartilage. There's two major lines of cartilage in the ear. You just want to avoid, you want to go. Just get his navel sorted out. My spray bottle's still used. Right, go straight the boy. Right, that's him. Go on in, pal. Come on, Abby, man. Come on. We'll see you, mother. Roll you over. Day done. Kev's tractor's due a service, so. Here's three filters for him. Right, so we've now got the sprayer yoked up, taking it along home. This is I'm at yard two at the moment. It's an honestly unbelievable day. Cat it is phenomenal weather. It's to cool down again Monday. It's Friday today, but we'll get a good weekend out of it anyway. There's been quite a few people sewing round about. We've not started. Just got all the plowing finished, everything else finished and round up and sorted, and then we'll crack on with sewing and hopefully just keep going and get it all done in the winter. It's still March, it's still early, so we're not we're not in a huge rush. We'll just we'll get to sewing maybe Sunday. It's Friday today, maybe we'll get going on Sunday. We've got a bit of spraying to do, there's a few other things to sort out. That's us finished with the plowing. Well there's one field but it's to be drained as well, so we're getting on top of things now. Another set of twins. Turns out that wasn't just one calf in there. I've tagged the first one. Went away, put the spare in the tractor, come back, and there's another calf there. Smashing, that's what we like to see. Number one's got a belly full of milk, and number two, sorry, the sun's kind of in your way. Number two's looking for it, so. When the weather's like this, everything's amazing. That's our lemkin plow, by the way. I was saying it was 
it's slats and not boards. The other plates are over them, it's boards, so full sheet of metal, whereas these are individual slats. Way more bolts. All different shapes and sizes and loads of them. Map update, filling in a wee bit. Then there's quite a few, loads across America and Canada. Oh, we had someone from South America. We had someone from Uruguay. So if you've not said where you're watching from, that's out with the UK, tell me where and I'll pin it on the map. Also, if you're watching and you know other people that are in some of these countries that are not in it or the states that are not in it, then let them know and um, tell them to go and watch the videos. If they watch them and keep watching them, they'll see me do this again and they'll be able to comment below saying where to pin and we'll get some more. I get stats on YouTube of where everyone watches from, but it's much better in visual form. There's only people who comment that are on the board. It's not because there's six odd thousand subscribed now, so they're obviously not on the board. It's just the people who comment. So keep commenting and we'll get you on the map. UK map coming soon. Will you dare to